Hello students. After we've talked about the history of microbiology and how did it evolve from being an illusion to reality, we're going to talk about what microbes are. And when we mention microbes, we sort of relate to the whole collection of viruses, bacteria, protozoa, algae, fungi. So it's a vast collection of microorganisms that we tend to summarize this whole group as microbes. So where do we, where we can find microbes? It seems that microbiologists, the more they are digging into microorganisms, the more they can find them currently inhabiting almost everywhere. In the soil, water, air, in animals, outside, inside, in plants, even on top of rocks, and even in outside our bodies and on top of our bodies. So we're host for trillions of microbes within our intestinal tract, within our mouth, within on skin. So when we talk about other environments, such as complex systems, such as the soil or the water or the air, we can also find that microbes could inhabit those environments with different types and many types of bacteria and fungi and algae and viruses and all around in so many different numbers. What is unique about microbes is that they're able to adapt to an ever-changing environment. And in a little bit, we'll talk about how they managed to survive that long on Earth. Others are foe. They could cause um, diseases. Others are gigantic. So the largest virus is the Ebola virus. The biggest bacterium is the Thiomargarita namibiensis. And the giant among protozoa is Foraminifera that can grow up to five to six centimeters. So they come in different forms, different shapes, different sizes. And here we're going to learn about some of them. So when we talk about evolution, Scientists tend to give microbes the credit of being an evolutionary success story. If we imagine Earth and since the beginning of the Earth time as a single day, okay, then microbes would have appeared sometime around 5 a.m. as being the early, early living creature inhabiting Earth. If we talk about very uh, dinosaurs as uh, ancient my, uh, organism, they don't pop up until 10 p.m. Where do humans come for? That's the question. Humans, uh, an analogy with a in a daytime of of human uh, of Earth's time, it would have appeared just seconds before midnight. Therefore, what we mean to hear in this slide that microbes are much more uh, surviving on Earth. Humans, we as human sapiens, we have not appeared on this Earth not until a few seconds in, in the uh, Earth time. So uh, we're very recent creatures in terms of microorganisms. There are many microbes are friendly. Many are foe, many are good, many are bad. The good ones that we tend to like to talk about and we manage to use and utilize useful products from, such as the Lactobacillus acidophilus here, this guy here, which turns milk into yogurt, or Saccharomyces cervatia, that, that makes the bread rice, or the antibiotic producers, the Streptomyces, or the Pituitida, which does a lot of help with the environment in cleaning up soil, uh, polluted soil and water. Others could work as insecticides, mycorrhizae help plants increase their fertility, and the E. coli, Escherichia coli, it helps humans and some animals in digestion. So many of them are good and friendly. Them. The deadliest, the most phobic, uh, the plaque disease, the Ebola virus, the HIV virus. So there's uh, many of them, they are not very friendly. 
and if we tend to grow them on culture as we will do, we will do in the consequent lab we will see that they're also diverse in those colonies so these are the colonies that appear on the petri dish they're diverse in how they look and um, how they appear and their colors on an agar plate so this is kind of a an intro to what do we mean when we talk about microbes we're going to hear give you a glimpse about what goes within their cells. What's the difference between a bacterial cell and a fungal cell? What, it, what do we mean by a prokaryotic cell versus a eukaryotic cell? So we're going to talk about cell structure and, and function. We're going to talk about cellular components and what, sh, what cells are made of. Mostly here at the end of the uh, this uh, lecture is to be able to differentiate, to tell the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. So, to start with prokaryotes, these cells, they believe to be the first cells to evolve. So scientists believe that these, the beginning of life forms started as prokaryotic cell. Simple, they don't have membrane-bound organelles. The genetic material is not enclosed within an envelope, so it's naked in the cytoplasm. And oribosomes are the only organelles. So this is kind of the structure of the prokaryotic cell. This is the cytoplasm. These are the, the capsule, the cell wall, and then the plasmic cytoplasmic membrane. And inside here comes the cytoplasm where the genetic material appearing here in blue and the dots here are the ribosomes okay this bacterium for example has a, a mean for movement which is called the flagella which is a you know a, a, um, an organelle that helps those bacteria to move we will talk about the cell wall what do we mean by the cell wall if you notice this is the part of the cell wall which is uh, green it encapsules the uh, um, the whole uh, cell and it's a rigid it's composed of a rigid peptidoglycan polysaccharide coat the main importance the main function for cell wall is to give shape okay and the surround and to surround the cytoplasmic membrane to offer protection from outside environment because they are the two major important give shape and give protection this is the uh, function of the cell wall which is composed of peptidoglycan layers okay the plasma membrane then follows the cytoplasmic membrane here in the light blue which is a, a layers to double layer it has composed of two layers of phospholipids and proteins this layer separates the cytoplasm from the external environment and the major function the major function for plasma membrane is to regulate the flow of materials in and out of the cell that's the major function of plasma membrane regulate what goes into the cell and what goes out from the cell then comes the cytoplasm it's called also called the protoplasm which is a gel-like matrix it is the place where most metabolic um, activities goes in it has water enzymes nutrients waste and it contains all other cell structures. We talked about ribosomes. Those circles are ribosomes. Okay, those are ribosomes, and they their major function is to translate the genetic code into proteins. The DNA, the genetic material that is within the prokaryotic cell, when the cell needs any um, enzyme or any gene to express that gene. That gene gets translated into proteins on the ribosomes. They are freestanding into the cytoplasm. The nucleoid region, it's a region on the cytoplasm. This is a site at the cytoplasm where the chromosomal DNA is located. Usually most of the chromosomal DNA is uh, compact and it codes for a uh, specific product but also there is a circular chromosome 
called plasmids. They're also located in the cytoplasm. Well, most we're, we talk about prokaryotes, we talk about shapes. Prokaryotes has four major shapes, like the coccus shape. These are the cocci, these are circles. They come in vibrio, which is kind of archy. They come in rod shape or bacilli, okay? They call it also bacillus. And they can come in spiral form, in spiral shape. So these are the major shapes of prokaryotes in general. The arrangements and how do two cells uh, look under the microscope? Under the microscope, they may look uh, alone, like standing alone. This is the coccus. They can come in two cells connected together, like diplococci. They can form a lump, like staphylococci. Or they can come in triads, like they can form the tetrad. Or eight uh, cells, like the sarsina. Or into chain, they make a chain, or like a strep. A streptococci. These are the coccus shape. As for the cell arrangement, some can come into either cocci we mentioned or bacilli, but others can uh, come in a weird shape where they're not completely coccus, we're not completely bacilli. So they tend to call them cocobacillus. Okay? If they come in a single shape, we call them bacillus or diplobacilli or streptobacilli. These are the several, some shapes that come with the bacillus arrangements. Now it is important for you guys to remember this slide. This is very important slide and we're going to talk about the plasma membrane structure. Okay, the plasma membrane and the most, we said that this is a very important in regulating the flow of material. It is composed of two layers of phospholipids. So this is the first layer of phospholipid, and this is the second layer of phospholipids. You can see that phospholipids come in heads and tails, heads and tails. Along with this head and tails of phospholipid comes protein structures. These are the purple ones, these are the protein, these are the peripheral proteins or integrated proteins. So these are also important in uh, uh, regulating the flow of material. Some has uh, uh, sugars attached to the um, proteins or the phospholipids, so they come with different functions. Mostly prokaryotic cells, we talk about bacteria. Bacteria, they are prokaryotes. They have cell wall outside the plasma membrane to give them shape and protect them from the osmotic lysis. The cell wall of bacteria is chemically complex. The cell wall, we said, it is composed of layers of peptidoglycan and urines. And what is unique is that we can classify bacteria either to gram positive or to gram negative based on differences in the cell wall structure and their response to gram staining okay so we will we will learn this technique in the lab we will learn the gram staining technique based to christian gram who developed the the stain this method of differentiating gram positive and gram negative bacteria gram positive bacteria they tend to have a thick homogeneous layer of peptidoglycan while gram-negative bacteria, they have a thin peptidoglycan layer surrounded by an outer membrane uh, that contains lipopolysaccharides and other components. So this is mainly the structure, cellular structure of prokaryotic cells. Here, we're gonna, this illustration shows you the difference between gram-positive and gram-negative. So this is a gram-positive and gram-negative. As we mentioned, gram is a reference to the uh, the inventor of the stain of the procedure uh, christian graham who first developed that we can differentiate the cell wall thickness in gram positive bacteria this is the cell wall here and this is the cell wall here the peptidoglycan layer the thin peptidoglycan layer so the cell wall in gram positive bacteria has a thick layer of peptidoglycan, while gram-negative bacteria has a thin layer of peptidoglycan surrounded by an outer membrane. So this is the inner part, inner side of the 
uh, of the bacteria surrounded by the plasma membrane. Here is the plasma membrane, double layer of plasma membrane. And then comes the cell wall where it is composed of the uh, uh, peptidoglycan layer and the outer membrane in case of gram negative. And in gram positive, here comes only the uh, layers, thick layers of peptidoglycan. So this is, you need to know the difference between gram positive and gram negative bacteria. In terms of ability to move from one place to another, many bacteria are motile uh, and there are different means of motility, different ways for microorganisms to become motile. Some we mentioned a flagella, which is a thread-like structure that could help, it's like a web that can help the bacteria move from one location to another. Others have cilia, which is short, numerous uh, hairs on surrounding the uh, whole surface of the bacterium. Now, the number and distribution of the flagella on the uh, membrane could also re be related to different species of bacteria. Now, those microbes that tend to move or to run to respond to a gradient of attractants or repellents, they can move towards an attractant or can move away from a repellent. This phenomenon is known as chemotaxis. This phenomenon is known as chemotaxis. So it is important for you to know that chemotaxis is, which is ability of microorganisms to move to respond to a gradient of attractants or repellents and to move towards it or away from it. Here at the end we will talk about um, eukaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells, we met, we said that they came second second evolutionary step after prokaryotes. These are the true nucleus. Eu means true. Eukaryotic, eu, and then karyotic means nucleus. Eu, true, karyon, nucleus. You, uh, they have true nucleus that contains membrane-bound organelles. They're thought to be evolved from prokaryotic cells. They have ribosomes that are important for translating the genetic code into proteins. And that's how ribosomes are attached to the mRNA. And then on a later step, we could see the, uh, um, the development of the polypeptide chain. And in eukaryotic cells, the ribosomes are located, they are not freely standing in the cytoplasm, they are located on the rough endoplasmic reticulum. That's where they are located. We don't have re re uh, uh, endoplasmic reticulum in the prokaryotic cell, but in the eukaryotic cell, we have endoplasmic reticulum, and those black dots that appear on this illustration represent the ribosomes, okay? These are the differences between prokaryotes versus eukaryotic cells. In eukaryotic cells, we, f we see a number of membrane-bound organelles like the mitochondria and the nuclear envelope and the rough endoplasmic reticulum, or uh, we could see smooth endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, uh, peroxisomes, plastid if it's a plant cell, while prokaryotic cells, they're very simple, they don't have any membrane-bound organelles. So this is the difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotic cell. In summary, if we talk about the nucleus, it is it is absent in prokaryotes and present with a nuclear envelope in eukaryotic cells. There's no organelles in prokaryotes, while they have several types of uh, uh, organelles in eukaryotic cells. The DNA structure is single loop, naked, no proteins, while in eukaryotic DNA uh, uh, is multiple chromosomal associated with proteins. The ribosomes in the, in the prokaryote, uh, they are smaller than the eukaryotic ones. They're the 70S ribosomes, while in, in eukaryotes, they are larger. So they are 80S ribosomes. The cell wall is generally present and chemically complex. 
in in eukaryotic cells, not all the cells, not all the eukaryotic cells have cell wall, and it, if if it is there, it is chemically simple. The reproduction in prokaryotes by binary fission, while mitosis is the uh, reproduction uh, mechanism in eukaryotic cells. This is our end of this series of slides. Thank you.